Yeah, baby. Hello, guys. It's that time of the year. Uh, happy holidays. <laughs> Sp it's, it's spend all your money time. Yep. It's what, what the pilgrims fought and died for. <laughs> so it's what the pilgrims yep. fought and died it's for. what they teach you in history class. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going through all the Black Friday deals today. Yes. Hello. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, the extra special Black Friday edition where we yes. do all the Black Friday deals. We've, we've been doing this since back when it was Wolf Den Live. We've been doing this since back on our parents' couch. Yep. So we're experts at this. Because you know what? We're excited about all of the stuff we, we can spend our own money on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, cut, a, you know, cut ahead a little bit. I actually have a spreadsheet of games I'm interested in buying. Ooh, on, that's uh, a good idea. Yeah, because I, I put in the price. I even put when the sale ends because my credit card statement ends on the 25th, so I know wh when exactly I can buy these oh, wait, games. Yeah, wait. Black Friday is the 24th. Black okay. Friday is the 24th. Yes, uh, that is this Friday. However, a lot of these sales are happening right now and a lot of them extend into december okay <laughs> so we got time yeah is what it's I'm very saying. annoying yeah. I, I saw a tiktok yesterday that was like people aren't gonna realize how black friday used to be these deals suck now i want a deal where i it's warranted to punch an old lady mm -hmm. in the face to get a to get a tv yeah the deals the deals aren't as good and i think Oh, I do think that extending it uh, for more than three days kind of like negates the danger of Black Friday. Yeah, no, I want the danger. Yeah, the yeah. danger helps. The danger you know? is good. Yeah, we we like a little bit of danger. Yeah, but I will say it's nice to not have to leave the house. Yes, exactly. Because leaving the house on Black Friday used to be a shit show. Yes, and now it's like a regular old day. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Gamer Lady, for gifting a sub to BB Retro. Uh, BB Retro, I looked at your Instagram story. You inspired me to buy uh, the funny playing, uh, <clears throat> the funny playing uh, FPGA Game Boy thing. So, I have funny playing, the uh -huh. people who make the screens for uh, modded Game Boys. Yes, they made their own FPGA Game Boy board oh. that you could put in the shell of a Game Boy. Uh, I went to the the day that that was released i went to the website and it was sold out yeah and i was like fuck and i waited and then i saw his instagram store and i was like oh let me check again and i checked again still sold out went to a different website and i found it but it was a lot more money than i should have paid <laughs> anyway where am i bob the real question is what do you think of nintendo's cyber monday we're getting there yeah. we're gonna get there take we're a, getting there take a beat all right, we I will like Will's that. idea with the spreadsheet. If there's a game that you want but haven't purchased yet, somebody in the chat said Sonic Superstars. Put that in your mind. Yeah. We're going to read through all of the circulars. F wait until you find the best deal because it might be $20 one place. It might be $15 another yes. place, you know? Sonic Superstars, I think I saw. I think I already saw for 35 Yeah. So that's already a good deal because the game just came out. Mm -hmm. Uh. Oh, and Rise Frog, thank you for the 34 months. What is up, Wolf Bros? I just wanted to thank you for this season, for all the content over the past year. I hope you continue in the future. It is a blessing to be able to watch. Also brought bought Pizza Tower because <laughs> of you, and it's delightful. Thank you, Rise Frog. Thank I'm you. glad you're enjoying Pizza Tower. All right. Uh, where do we want to start? Uh, do you want to start with the uh, physical stores, or do you want to oh. go to the... Uh, right. The games, the the online stores. Let's themselves. do online, starting with Nintendo. Starting with Nintendo, got it. Yeah, because that's uh, everybody. Everybody yeah. loves a good Nintendo. Yes. So they have their own uh, cyber deals. Yeah, cyber deal sale is here. Score big savings on select Nintendo Switch games now through December third. Yeah. Okay. So you got plenty of time to mull this over, um, and as Edward Bova alluded to earlier. A lot of the deals are underwhelming with the Nintendo eShop sale. Yeah, so the first one that they have here is Odyssey for $40, which they do every single year. Yeah. They've done that for like the past four years. I so. think it. the unfortunate reality is, you know, the quote unquote Nintendo's hacks, where games are generally more expensive on Nintendo's platform than they are on the other platforms. And... uh 
I feel like we're not going to see the best deals on these digital storefronts. I feel like we're going to see the best deals at the big box retailers. Um, it depends because some games there are legitimately good deals on. Okay. And some games, yeah, there are there. It's actually better at the big box stores. We got Just Dance 2024 for forty dollars and fifteen cents for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, why? So Super Mario Odyssey is thirty three percent off and it's thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Just Dance is thirty three percent off. It's forty fifteen. That's weird. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, Fire Emblem Engage is $42, which is good because that mm -hmm. came out uh, at the beginning of the year. Yes. So that's kind of a brand new game. They also have that plus the expansion pack uh, that is $72. <laughs> I didn't even know they had an expansion yeah. pack. Uh, Red Dead Redemption is uh, $35, still too expensive. That's pretty good. It's better than 50 a lot of people just want to play it on their Switch. I know. Which I, I think is... I just want to play it on my Switch. But I don't feel comfortable <laughs> spending, uh, you know, $35. For, I, for a worse experience. I've heard it's not bad on Switch. Yeah, I've heard it's, no, like, I've heard it's not bad either. Yeah. But it's going to be better taking a, the disc you already have and yeah. putting it in your Xbox. I actually... Uh, slight tangent. I uh, This was a couple weeks ago. Sony had the Arkham Collection on sale for $5. Yeah, that was All crazy. three games. Bought it. Because I'll be damned if I'm paying $50 for it on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, Myth Force, which also just came out and looked really cool. I heard it is not. Ooh. Uh, that is $20. Down from 30 So that's not so bad. Yeah. Li li live Alive? Live, live Alive? alive. Kevin! Kevin, what yes. is it? <laughs> uh, that is $35. That okay. is pretty good. That's a pretty good deal. Luigi's Mansion 40. A lot of these uh, AAA first party Nintendo games of old, yeah. if they're like four years old at this point, three years old yeah. at this point, uh, they will be $40 probably. Nintendo notoriously does not lower their game prices. Right. You know, they, they believe in the keeping their games high uh, at launch price because it maintains their value. In their Kirby eyes. and the Forgotten Land uh, still has a demo. Yeah. And that is $42. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good. Tunic, $21. That's kind of a lot of money for Tunic. I thought it'd be cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we got? Uh, Yoshi's Crafted World, $40. Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, $21. That's a that, good deal. It's the deluxe edition, too, so it's everything. That's a very good That's deal. That's a very good deal. Sonic Frontiers, $24. That's pretty good, down yeah. from 60 but again, uh, that one, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw at least $20 uh, from a big box store. Yeah. Uh, speaking of $20, Sifu is only $20. I forgot about Sifu. I forgot it was on Switch. I should get that. Do I have it? On Switch? What, wasn't or? it? It was originally a PS5 game. Yeah. 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 Was it on? No. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining it was a PlayStation Plus game, but that can't be right. No, I don't think it was. Uh, all right, well, twenty dollars is pretty damn great for that. Yeah, uh, Bayonetta Origins, which also came out this year, uh, forty-two dollars. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Tetris Effect Connected, twenty dollars. People there love that game. Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, twenty uh, forty-two dollars. Um, uh, that's that. Yep, yeah. uh, Grand Theft Auto Trilogy, thirty dollars. Doom Eternal. 10 bucks. That's good. That is a good deal. Yeah. Doom Eternal kicks ass. Yeah, that's a very good deal. If you scroll down a little later, you can also get Doom 2016 for 10 bucks. You can get Doom 1 for $2. Yeah. And Doom 3 for $4. And Doom 64 for $2. That's amazing. I'm not seeing Doom 2, but I also imagine it's on sale for $2. I'm not seeing Quake. Where's Quake? Uh, Well, I think we're in the Ds. De oh, my God. We're doing this in alphabetical. Oh, they've switched They've switched to alphabetical order. That's yeah, they do that. Went. They do like the, the high profile games, and then they do alphabetical order. Yeah, Doom 2 is not listed, but it's $2. So you can oh, get the shit. entire Doom series for like 30 bucks. Change. Um, Dead Cells is $15, which is kind of, I think, a lot of money because the game came out in 2018. Yeah. But the DLC is on sale. Yes. For three fifty dollars each, each piece of DLC. Uh, now I'm just scrolling. No Man's yeah. Sky, $30. That's not so okay. bad. People like No Man's Sky. 
and it, uh, now they like No Man's Sky. Resident Evil 4, not the remake. The no. original Resident Evil 4 ported to the Switch for $10. There That's you go. That's pretty good. Also, all of them, actually. All of the old Resident Evil games are $10. Uh, yes. It, here's, here's a weird one. Resident Evil 2 Cloud and Resident Evil 7 Cloud are $16. And Resident Evil Village Cloud is $16. But Resident Evil 3 Cloud is 10 Okay, interesting. You know why? People didn't like that one as much. <laughs> I never played Resident Evil 6. I have zero intention on doing it. Yeah, I have. But it's $10. I have Resident Evil 6 for Switch. We have it for Xbox. Xbox right? Yeah. But like, yeah, I have no desire to play it. Got it and never played I it. I do want to play Resident Evil Village. I've but... been wanting to play Ali Ali World. That is $15. Mm. All right, I don't want to just scroll through the alphabetical here, but uh, I think we right. got through I think some of the best deals here. Yeah, I didn't see it on here, but on my spreadsheet, uh, Burnout Paradise, the deluxe edition, like the complete pack, is only $6 for Switch. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a pretty good deal. And uh, the add-on bundle for Mortal Kombat 11, which is the Aftermath DLC and all the skins, is only $10. Oh, damn. So... Those, that's what Will is looking forward to for Black Friday. Mostly Burnout. I have Mortal Kombat highlighted in yellow, which is a maybe. All of the Mega Man Legacy collections are uh, less than $10. Yeah. Uh, Zero Legacy Collection, which uh, is amazing, is only $10. Mm-hmm. Uh, down from 30 and, and Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2 are $8 each. The Contra Anniversary Collection is $4. Oh, You get like oh my God. 10 games in that. <laughs> All right, I'm over I'm over uh Nintendo. Okay. Uh I will say thank you to some people. Uh Random Heart, thanks for the 19 months. This is the first year I've been underwhelmed and unmotivated to buy anything for Black Friday. Prove me wrong, Wolf Bros. Last year, I don't think I bought a single thing. Mm-hmm. This year, I already bought some stuff off of Amazon, but it was by accident. Okay. Uh, I have something in my cart that I'm hoping will go on sale. And um, I'm definitely going to load up on micro SD cards. But we'll get to that when we get yeah. to Amazon stuff. Uh, so I might convince you to buy some micro <laughs> SD cards. Uh, Rock and Val, thanks for gifting a sub to Pork Chop. Marimba Pirate, thank you for the 48 months. It's been a while. I had twins last month, so I've been busy slash exhausted. Oh. But I finally have a minute to catch you guys. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I hope I hope everything's going well. You, you had two at the same time. I I spread them out. You you went right for <laughs> you went right for hard. He's speed mode, running man. it. Yeah. He's speed running it. Uh, Spankwise, thanks for the 27 months. I'm thankful for you guys. Have a great Thanksgiving. Well, thanks, you too. Bro. All right, we will go, what, to Xbox? Uh, Sure, we can go to Xbox. Let's go to Xbox. Here we are at Xbox. Xbox generally has some good deals. Okay. And I've noticed comparing uh, Xbox's uh, sales to Sony sales, uh, if, like, the Bethesda games, you could tell Xbox is, like, trying to sweeten the pot on their end because they're, they're significantly cheaper Okay. on Xbox. Uh, Yeah, first one is kind of a big deal. Starfield. Yeah. It was 70 it is now fifty five ninety nine. They really want you to play Starfield. They're trying their best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mortal Kombat one that just came just out. Just came out. It's already forty eight ninety nine. Forty eight ninety nine. Thirty percent off. Assassin's Creed Mirage just came out and it's already ten dollars off. And that makes it forty dollars. That game yeah. was already pretty cheap. Diablo four also just came yeah. out fifty three ninety nine down from ninety oh it's the deluxe edition yeah okay that's pretty crazy payday three also just came out thirty one ninety nine it was forty okay that's another thing too like this is the time like deluxe editions if they're going on sale they're getting slashed mm-hmm. so like. If you haven't played this game before, just spend the extra two dollars and get the deluxe edition. What the fuck is this Forza pack? Forza Motorsport and Forza Horizon Five. Okay, it's both games, but the premium versions of both games. Yes, two hundred dollars usually. It's one twenty. I'm gonna say just don't buy that. Yeah, <laughs> that's just too much. Pick mm-hmm. pick one. You don't need both of those. Mm-hmm. If you like Forza that much, you probably have those games already. Yeah. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 15 bucks. What's going go. on here? Did uh, Lords of the Fallen just come out? Because that's 48 dollars Yes, that did just come out. That's a new game. 
Cyberpunk and Phantom Liberty. So if you've never played Cyberpunk because it was broken at launch, yeah. but you were interested in it, now it might be a good time. Yeah, now is definitely a good time. Uh, Red, Redfall, 1750. Where do you see that? Uh, a little bit down. Oh, I'm, mine's, mine's, oh, it was the oh, next page for me. Okay, I, I just loaded, you know, show 200 per page. That's a good idea. Yeah. Jedi Survivor, 41.99. That's not Now bad. might be a good time yeah. for me to get that. Uh, Yeah, Redfall being slashed down to 17.49 <laughs> is insane, because that's, again, a brand yeah. new game. That's 75% off. Yeah. Uh, Resident Evil 4. Also, Deluxe edition. just yeah. came out this year, forty eight ninety nine. One of the best games of the year. Yes, uh, Control ten dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. I I you don't ha have that. You have it. Do I have it? You have it because I borrowed it from you, oh, and okay. then it was a uh, it became a PS Plus game, so I gave it back to you. Right, right. Yeah. I've I only played the demo for that, and I yeah, like. I still haven't played it. I want to play it. Microsoft. I might have, I might have to borrow the disc from you again because I'm going to lose my PlayStation. Take Plus. Take it. Microsoft Flight Simulator, thirty five ninety nine. I mm -hmm. thought that game was free. I thought so too. Is it a Game Pass game? Is that why I think? Probably. That? Yeah. Halo Infinite twenty three ninety nine. Hey, don't buy that. That's definitely cheaper in retail. Yeah, don't buy that because it's cheaper if you want the disc and also Game Pass. Right. Just play it on Game Pass. A lot. You know what? Some of these games play it on Game Pass. But if you don't have Game Pass. Get Game Pass. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2, 67% off. That 20 is, bucks, yeah. 20 bucks, yeah. That's pretty good. Street Fighter 6, $40. That's good. That's, That's good. also That's a, a game that deal. came out this year. Sonic Origins Plus, which is very good Yes. now, all of a sudden. They, they did a lot of updates. Yeah. Uh, you can play as Amy, and she slaps. Uh, twenty five ninety nine. Nice. That's pretty good. Callisto Protocol, people didn't like that. No, right? that, that's a bad okay, one. Well, that's yeah. 25 bucks. If you uh, try the it. Tomb Raider Definitive Survivor Edition, $17 for three games. Oh, my God. And two and a half of them are good. Uh, Ian K's Boulevard says, uh, Bob, you didn't see Borderlands 3 for $9. Okay, I just skipped over it because <laughs> it was Borderlands, but $9 yeah. is pretty goddamn good. Uh, okay, I think we've kind of exhausted the good ones here. Okay. Alien oh. Hominid 360 is $3. There you go. I mean, there's a lot of games Anthem here. Anthem is $2, but I feel like we've seen that before. Yeah. Uh, Arkham Knight is $4, and Return to Arkham is $5. Assassin's Creed Chronicles China is $4. I've wanted to try that. Yes. Uh, all the Battlefield games are on sale, and the Battlefront games are on sale star wars battlefront 2 uh on its own six dollars star wars battlefront 2 celebration edition eight dollars okay so like i'm saying just spend the extra two bucks and get the the deluxe edition for a lot of these games oh blasphemous 2 uh it's not that big of a deal 20 percent off but that only makes it 24 dollars instead mm -hmm. of 30 blasphemous 2 is amazing uh but 24 dollars that's not that good of a deal no all right uh, uh, let's go to PlayStation. Okay, we got a we got a lot to go. I, I did want to touch on. Uh, do you remember the game Prey that came out a couple years ago? Yes, that's on sale right now for three dollars on Xbox. On Xbox, oh. yes, that's a Bethesda game. Yes, yeah, a Bethesda. Oh, game. okay. Yeah, I know on PlayStation that's like seven dollars. Oh my god! The more egregious one because these are all on my spreadsheet because I have a spreadsheet. Um, so all right, well let's go to PlayStation and we'll okay. I'll come back around to it. Okay, we also got a notification from Warlock. Thanks for the 20 months and Volcanic Puppy for the 15 months. First, Wolf Bros Live. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And uh, G Blades, thanks for the five months. Hello, Wolf Bros. I have a question for you, Bob. If you had a chance to collab with Retroid and Bernick other to create a Wolf Den Retroid handheld, would you take it? Um, yes, but I'd be very uh, particular about it probably and i don't think it would work out <laughs> I, would, I, I would say yes have a lot of concerns and then mm -hmm. it would probably fall through if i had to be honest with you uh all right we're on playstation yes again got some good deals on playstation w what did you oh just view all yeah just view all i also filtered by games because on the right side you see that arrow oh okay. yeah because they full fail. game full game okay uh, full, well, full game and uh, 
game bundle, which includes like the Lux editions and stuff. Because okay. they'll also throw in like, you know, V box and like, yeah, like DLC a shirt. and yeah, yeah, like cosmetics and shit, and it's just it gets confusing. Otaku Sam says, Wolf Den Satisfy Grip. I was asked to do a Satisfy Grip. I said, I didn't want to do a Satisfy Grip. And then I said, I want to do a case. And mm-hmm. then we came up with concepts for a case. And then we never made a case. <laughs> That's how that went. Um. Anyway. So this These look very similar to Xbox off the rip. We got $40 yeah, for Assassin's similar. Creed Mirage. We got uh, $42 for Diablo, but mm-hmm. it's the regular edition. It's not the special fancy edition. $40 for Resident Evil 4. I think that's what it was on Xbox, right? Uh, hold on. Mortal Kombat 1, $49. So the deluxe edition of Resident Evil 4 on Xbox was 48 This is the regular edition of Resident Evil 4 for 40 Okay. Yeah. What's the deluxe edition of Resident Evil? Come it with? comes with oh, like outfits and shit. Outfits and like guns. Okay. You yeah. don't. You don't really you, need that. You don't need that. Yeah. Street Fighter, forty bucks. Mm-hmm. That's uh, pretty in line with what we've seen. Hogwarts Legacy, uh, PS4 is thirty six dollars. PS5 is forty two dollars. Yes. It takes two twelve dollars. That's a great deal. Yeah, and you get both versions of the game. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. how it should be. Jedi Survivor, forty-two dollars. Uh, God of War Ragnarok, forty dollars. That's not bad. No, that's the PS5 and four versions yeah. together. Oh, there you go. Gotham Knights, thirteen, I think. Yep. Yeah, eighty percent off. Yeah. That is crazy. Probably for a reason. Yes. Liza P. That also just came yeah. out. Forty-seven ninety-nine. That is a good deal. I kind of want to try that mm-hmm. game. Uh, what else do we got what here? Else we got here? Horizon Forbidden West, thirty dollars. Spider-Man games are on sale. The yep. older ones, the older I feel ones, like that's, yes. that's not too hard to to come by. Yeah, thirty-two dollars for Payday Three. I think it was cheaper on Xbox. I think so. Uh, Red Dead Redemption Two, twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. That seems in line. You're gonna see a lot of crossover between yeah. Xbox and PlayStation. Red Dead Online? I had no idea that's a separate thing. I think they, they spun it out to make it its own separate thing. But if you buy the base game, you get it also, I don't right? Know if that, I don't know if that's true anymore. Because I think Red Dead Online was like struggling for a long time, and they were like trying their damnedest to like make it a thing. We're going to have a rude awakening when uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out. Oh, yeah. And they're going to nickel and dime everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, f- what else is there? Uh, Sifu is sixteen dollars for PS4 and PS5 edition. That is more than it. Yes, it was ten dollars on yeah. Switch. Okay, I mean, I'd rather play it on PlayStation. Yeah. To be honest, Dead Space, the one that people liked. Yes, uh, thirty-five dollars down from seventy. There which you is go. Good. Final Fantasy VII Remake is fifteen dollars. They're saying it's only thirty though. It's down from thirty. Like it was thirty, now it's fifteen. Okay, so they probably cut its price, and like the standard price is no longer like sixty or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then the remake integrated, which is the second one. That's like the one point five. Yeah, well, that the one... second second one is re- going to be rebirth. Oh, well, that one's fucking fifteen dollars yeah. also. So I don't know what the difference is. Oh wait, is that like the PS five version of the same thing? No, integrate is like it's basically an expansion pack for remake okay that makes sense well that one says ps5 and the other one says ps4 because i think integrate was only available on ps5 yeah so it's like it's like subsistence right yes it's like a, it's like a special edition that comes with a little extra stuff i, but I it's think for the, you the need different console i think you need the final fantasy 7 remake in order to take advantage of the enhancements of integrate it says game bundle i'm gonna click on it all right yeah See what is included. Because I don't know. The concept of Final Fantasy VII Remake confuses the hell out of me. Del- Digital Deluxe Edition comes with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Okay. Uh, Wait, no. Standard Edition also comes with Final Fantasy VII Remake. So the Digital Deluxe just comes with an art book and a d- soundtrack. Okay. The Standard Edition also comes with that. Integrated is the PS5 version that came with the dlc okay okay so get that version it's yeah. 15 dollars uh 
Anyway, Re Remnant 2, which is a game I've wanted to try, that is $35, standard edition. Okay. High on Life, problematic game, $26. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Uh, what else is there? I'm like skipping ahead. We got the Mafia Trilogy, 20 bucks. A Way Three Out. Games. A Way Out. Great multiplayer game. Yeah. $4.50. <laughs> That's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Uh, I think we we hit alphabetical order territory. Yeah, I think so. we did too. So I'm just skipping ahead. Uh, What's Skater XL? Should I try that? Thirty dollars. Oh, I, I think that's like an a really difficult like skateboard sim because like you don't just control the legs, you control the feet as well. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order, eight bucks. That's not bad. Resident Evil Two Deluxe Edition, thirteen dollars. Uh, I don't know if we skipped it, but uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which is fairly recent, I think. I think it was mm -hmm. last year. The PS4 version is twenty bucks. The PS5 version is thirty bucks. But the PS5 version gets you both versions of the game, oh. PS4 and PS5. Well, okay then. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's 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 get at it. We're we're done All with right. the digital storefront. Yeah. I did want to mention my little thing that I saw was uh, Deathloop on PS5. Mm -hmm. You know, the original PS5 exclusive. $12. Okay. Not bad. That's pretty good. It's the same thing on Xbox. However, the deluxe version of Deathloop on Xbox is $16. The deluxe version on PlayStation is not on sale. Ooh. So, yeah. Okay. That's a little thing you got if you're blessed with both consoles. Didn't love that game. It was okay. I've heard it was so good, though. Well, you can try it. Right, you have it? You go, have it on Go desk? try it. All right, then I won't yeah. buy it then. I'll just take it off my list. <laughs> um, Delete. Delete. So we'll go into the big box retailers, but before we do that, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at uh, Amber Nick. They make, uh, you know... Uh, emulation devices. They are having a Black Friday sale. Ooh. Pretty much everything is ten dollars off. Uh, okay. RG four hundred five V. I have a video on that. That is ten dollars off. Uh, RG three five XX, the one that is the most popular, that I also have a video on. That is ten dollars off. However, they are making an RG three five XX Plus soon, and we have an article on that, which I just found out about ten minutes before <laughs> we went live. RG three five three V, which I also think I have a video on. Ten dollars off, mm -hmm. and then just random shit. RG Nano, which I also have a video on, mm -hmm. uh, five dollars off, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Uh, I will put an affiliate link in the description of the YouTube uh, video for this, and I'll also put an Amazon affiliate link. Uh, it'll just be a general link if you want to do any shopping and help support the channel. That'd be great. You just click on that link and then do whatever the fuck you want. Um. Anyway. We will jump over to what should we do first? Uh, what should we want to do? Want to do Amazon? Let's, let's yeah, do let's Am do. Amazon's the hardest one to. We'll do Amazon, but like, yeah, it, they are generally because they're they're so huge and they're so scattershot, mm -hmm. and their prices like are never consistent mm -hmm. from one day to the next. I have to put it in an incognito window real quick. So the first thing on their circular is an Amazon Luna. Uh, up to 70% off select Amazon Luna gaming controllers. Mm -hmm. So how much is 70% off? So $40 for an official Luna controller. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, why would I want this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a good deal if you really want an Amazon Luna controller. Yeah, but at the same time, like as we'll see, like first party controllers, like Dual Sense controllers and Xbox controllers, are also on sale for just a little bit more. Uh, here on on Amazon, everywhere. Okay, everywhere. Let's so, like, if Xbox we controllers real quick, I'm just gonna be shopping on Amazon right now because they have a really yeah. horrible like way to like quantify where they really do. On sale. I. Uh, I know that DualSense controllers, off the top of my head, are on sale everywhere for fifty bucks. Okay, which well, is great. Xbox controllers, fifth, uh, forty-five. Yeah, this one says Xbox One controller, but I think it's the same. If it has the share, oh, it says X. Oh, yeah, you're right. If it has a share button, it's a Series X controller. Okay, these but are it'll Series work X? on both. 
$45 for this red one, $45 for this like weird looking cloud one that looks pretty cool. Is this the one I have? No, it's not the one I have. I didn't know that one existed. Uh, those are good deals. Mm -hmm. Oh, this lime one is $45. Now's a good time to buy controllers. If yes. Uh, Dual Sense, you said was on sale? Yeah, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. You got some nice colors there, too. Yeah. Ooh, they have the, all right, well, the Dual Sense Edge stick module is $20. That's not a sale. No. I, I just didn't know that was yeah. available. But this also includes the new, like, uh, Deep Earth collection or whatever that just came out. Mm -hmm. Like the really nice red and cobalt blue. Okay. So that's good. There you go. Uh, SD cards. Let's jump right to that. Okay. Oh, no. Micro SD cards. So I usually go for these SanDisk Extreme ones, uh, either the gold or the silver ones. Yeah. Uh, these are on sale. This 128 gigabyte one is $13. It's 50% off. Okay. Uh, I usually go for these SanDisks unless I'm buying like a pack because I get so many of these uh, handhelds yeah. that I just need a pack of 32 or 64 gigabyte cards that I could just slap into all of these different yeah, devices yeah. because I have like my entire ROM collection basically fits on a 32 gigabyte card yeah. unless it's got like Switch games and shit that I need a little bigger. Um, so I just need a pack of them and just, just, just store away. $13 for 128 gigabytes though. If I can get a pack, mm. maybe I'll get that. One terabyte? This is the one that I have, I think, in my Nintendo Switch. A hundred dollars, that's not a good that's not a deal. Uh hundred dollars for the Zelda edition SD card as well. That's wait, is that that's a, terabyte? that's a terabyte. Okay, that's yeah. that's a good deal. Yeah. Thirty three dollars for a five hundred and twelve gigabyte, that is a good deal. Hmm. That is eighteen percent off. Uh but I also hear that the Samsung ones, which are also very good. The Samsung ones are also on sale. Yes. Uh, yes. Here's a 512 gigabyte Pro one. That's $32. Okay. Uh, I guess that's the biggest one that they have. 256 gigabyte is $18. All right. Let me look at this. The silver SanDisks, uh, $12. That's not much different than the gold ones. And I think the gold ones are faster. Oh, they have... Okay. One terabyte silver is $81. 1.5 terabytes, which is the brand new one. Right. This is the biggest micro SD card that you can buy right yeah. now. Uh, $150. Not a sale, but not a bad deal. No. Because yeah. you're paying a dollar a gigabyte. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to see because now also we got to think about... A dollar every 10 gigabytes? I can't do math. We got to think about NVMe drives and those uh, Xbox expansion cards. And stuff. Yes. I do yes. see the um, the Western Digital Black Xbox Series expansion card, a terabyte, $125. Okay. Down from $150. Still too expensive, but if you need the storage, there it is. Yeah, I mean, that's like your only option, really. Yeah. I have, who else makes it? Western Digital and SanDisk, right? Uh, I don't know if SanDisk makes one. No, SanDisk is owned by Western Digital. Seagate. That's the other Seagate. one. Yeah. So SanDisk also has a sale on their extreme portable drives. These get a lot of crap. Uh, yeah, they these have been controversial for just failing, and they like SanDisk doesn't like have a response to it. Yeah, I currently use a four terabyte Extreme Pro. This one right here mm -hmm. for all of my video work. I use it every single day. Never had a problem. Right. The older one, the this one. The 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 regular extreme, not the pro. Yeah, constantly uh, would just stop working. Right. Uh, it would the way that it would it would fail. It would fail in such a way where uh, it would just get slow and shitty, yeah. and I can like copy everything off of it, wipe it, like format it, and then copy everything back to it, and it would run fine. So that one. This isn't the extreme. This is just the regular Sandisk portable. Okay. And as far as I know. This was actually not on the list of SanDisk uh, drives that were having issues. Okay. So these are, they're not made for like being like thrown around and shit, but they're generally cheaper than the extreme ones are. So if you see these on yes. sale, these are apparently safe to use. Uh, they're not prime eligible. Oh, whack. Uh, maybe the two terabyte is. Nope. Uh, it's still free delivery, but not prime okay. for some reason. Uh, 
So I'm going to say avoid the Samsung Extreme unless you want to use it just as, as like a backup drive yeah. or, or you have a backup of it constantly already. Um, because again, the way that it fails, it fails in a way where you can still copy the stuff off of it. It just kind of gets shitty. Um, I would recommend the four terabyte Extreme Pro because I use it all the time. That's great. Just again, make sure you're keeping a backup of it because mm -hmm. you should just always do that. Uh, that one also is not Prime eligible, the four terabyte one. Interesting. Uh, the two terabyte though is on, oh, they're both on sale. The four terabyte is 240, mm -hmm. which sounds like a lot, but it, you know what? I think I paid like five hundred dollars for it. Yeah, it like used to be a like shit ton very of expensive. Uh, the two terabyte, uh, which is I think more, a lot more reasonable, is one hundred and forty dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. And there's other ones. Uh, there's uh, oh the Samsung ones. Everybody uses the Samsung ones. Samsung. Uh, the portable. Oh SSDs. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just looking at those. Fifty bucks for a one terabyte. Yeah. This is a oh this is a SATA one though. Right. Yeah, this is a SATA drive. Oh yeah, no, I got um the Samsung T7 Shield one terabyte, eighty bucks. Is that this one? No, that is the blue one. I love it. Oh, that yeah. looks cool. Part of why I got the Sandisk one was because it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone had the Samsung ones, and those were even more expensive at the yeah. time. Yeah, uh, two terabytes for this cool looking one, one hundred twenty dollars. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Part of the thing though is the speed. Uh, this one's a ten fifty megabits per second. Is that oh up to? You have to really look into these because yeah. uh, they lie about speeds a lot. Writes up to a thousand. Okay, that's not bad. That's not that's not bad. What's the Sandisk uh, right up to? Where's where's the uh, I need the Extreme Pro. So the two terabyte. Compare. Uh yeah. Ten up to ten fifty. Oh, it, that's the regular. The Extreme Portable. Oh, you want the no, Pro? The Pro is two thousand. It's yeah. double the speed. Uh, but again, that might be download and not upload. Mm-hmm. Oh, read and write speeds. Okay, dude. That's why I added off of it, because right. it's extremely fast. Um, then you have this one. I think this one's brand new, the T9 Samsung. It must be. It's got a higher number. Yeah, it's got a higher number. It's more expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. Four terabytes, 250 bucks. That is very good for a four terabyte. Mm -hmm. um, and it's up to 2,000, so this might be the one. I don't have any experience with this, but that that's a very good deal. It's 43% yeah. off. This, 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 I think, is the one. Okay. Uh, not a prime, not prime eligible, but uh, it is free shipping and it's four terabytes for two fifty. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll yeah. just, I just feel like I should just fucking put this in my cart. <laughs> uh, I see over here the crucial T five hundred one terabyte Gen four NVMe. That's you can put in your PlayStation five one terabyte sixty five dollars. That's good. and it has a heat sink uh, already on it. That's good. So just just buy that. Just, just if you have a PS5 and you don't have a drive in it yet, buy that. Because yeah. NVMe drives, they were going down in price, but not anymore. So if you can get if you can get a two terabyte under a hundred dollars, get that. But that's becoming like very rare. Uh so I would say just get that. There's a Samsung Pro version that is one terabyte that is eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. And there's a four terabyte version. That is two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, which is pretty goddamn good. So, if you need any sort of storage media, Black Friday is like the best time to yeah. you know, load up on storage. Um, I'd still like to try to find a good pack of micro SD cards. I feel like I've I failed yeah. to do that. I'm still waiting for one terabyte S uh, SD cards to just go down a little bit more so I can get it for my They're Switch. Pretty good. They're pretty. They're pretty good right? now, but. So is eating, and I want to. I should spend money on food. So there is a Black Friday deal on these PNY cards. Uh, okay, 128 gigabytes for uh, 18 bucks. Mm -hmm. I don't. I wouldn't usually get PNY, but uh, if I'm just getting a pack for some shitty emulators, uh, yeah, that's fine. Amazon Basics got some. I'm like nervous about those Amazon Basic ones. Okay, here we go. Micro Center. Micro Center kind of shitty cards. Yeah. But a pack of five 32 gigabytes, 18 bucks. Yeah. 
I kind of want it. Can I get 64 gigabytes? Do they have 64? They have five 64 gigabytes for 20 bucks. Oh, then, yeah. Hey. Oh, wait. They Okay, hold on. Somebody do math for me. <laughs> 10 64 gigabytes for $55. All right. 55 divided by 10. That we can do in our heads. Is that f- five bucks? A little yeah, $5.50. Dollars. Dollars yeah. Um, so wait. Okay. Wait, is it cheaper to get two of the five packs? It's cheaper to get two of the five packs. It's $20 for a five pack. Okay. I'm going to get two of the five packs. There you go. Oh, because they, they are on a Black Friday deal. 20 ah. bucks. I'm getting two of these five packs. Uh, these might be shitty micro SD cards, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm just putting them in an emulator, putting it on my shelf, and never touching it again. There you go. All right. Done deal. I've I've done my shopping. Uh, I guess that's Amazon. That's Amazon. Right? I'm sure we'll come across like something else on another store. Oh, you know, yeah. like if we missed it here. Because all Definitely. the sales are like essentially the same. You know, what, let me check one more thing. There, there's a Ritz camera. Is is the uh, SD cards that I use for my cameras? Okay. All of my cameras basically have this. Uh, they are not on sale at all. Hmm. You know what though? They're not that expensive. S- Seventy bucks? Is that a sale? No. All right, whatever. Uh, anyway. I'll take some notifications real quick. We got... Where am I? Uh, Warlock, thanks for the 20 months. Big Dad Mayhem, thanks for the 13 months. And DJ Skeletor, thanks for gifting five whole subs. That's a lot of subs. Thank you very much. There's a five-pack of PNY cards for $30. That's not bad. That's not bad if you want some good cards. PNY Mm. is probably better than Micro Center. Yeah. But I don't care. May... Pecco, Pecco, thank you for these seven months. All right. Uh, what else? Where What's do we want to go stuff? now? Want to do Best Buy? Yeah, let's do Best Buy. Best I got Buy. that open. Best Buy has a deal on an Xbox Series X. Yes. We haven't talked about consoles at all this whole time. No. Uh, I don't think there's any deals on the PlayStation. You can, uh, they, They're offering two bundles for the new Slim model. Either the Spider-Man bundle or the Call of Duty 3 bundle. Mm-hmm. Uh, both 500 bucks, but you get the game for free. So there's that. Uh, Xbox Series X, one terabyte, uh, $50 off. So $450. And I think that's everywhere. That's very good. Yes. I mean, the console's been out for a long time. The console's been out for a while. <laughs> yes. It's so, for I mean, a... it's not like, you know, amazing, but. I I don't know if it's here, but if the Series S is also having some crazy deals going on right now. Okay. You can get it for 250. But I've seen some stores like through coupons and stuff, you can get it for 150. The Series S? Series S. Holy shit. So <laughs> 250 on its own for a next gen console, still pretty good. Yeah, it's good, but they've had that deal for a while. Right. We've seen that pop up a lot. I haven't seen much about the black one, the 1 terabyte. Is it even out? Yeah, it's out. It's I've, definitely yeah, out. I've never seen it in a store. I didn't realize until fucking yesterday that the PlayStation 5 Slim is out. Mm. You just have to get the Call of Duty bundle, but it's yeah. five hundred dollars. So five hundred dollars, yeah. That's not bad. I'll take I'll take a free Call of Duty. Yeah. Do Xbox controllers need batteries? Yes. yes. Uh, you will need to get a little uh, battery rechargeable battery, or adapter. just uh, use double A's because they have a deal with Duracell. Yes. Um, I don't know how to navigate. Oh, wait. I found a Logitech G Cloud is on sale for $50 off. That's not a big deal. We've seen that deal before, mm-hmm. but uh, still, uh, it's a deal. Uh, the Backbone controller is on sale for $70. It's is that the off. PlayStation one? It's both versions. Ooh. So if you, want a, if you want a PlayStation portal, but you only have $70 to spend... Get yourself the backbone controller. That's very good because I will be linking to this in my video this week. Seventy dollars. That's a that's a very good deal. Yeah. Um 
Where are the games? Uh, they're on the page I'm on. There's a... Uh, let's see here. Let's just do all video games. And I'll just spit them out. Starfield, $55. Hogwarts Legacy, $40. Mario Odyssey, $40. Uh, God of War Rag Ragnarok, $35. This seems pretty much the same as the uh, online uh, deals. Now here we go. Halo Infinite, fifteen dollars. Okay, that's better than what. That is better Xbox than what Microsoft is offering you. Hey, you can get an M you can get M1 IMAX now. That's not a good deal though. Uh, 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 Twelve hundred dollars for an M1 for an M1 for an M1 IMAX. Yeah, that's not that good. Uh, right? Mm. Aren't they like fifteen? Yeah. For an M2? If you want an M1, I would probably just like shop, you know, Apple's refurbished. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, that's a the M, deal. Yeah, the M3s, might as well just save up a little bit and get an M3. Yeah, that, that's that's not that's not good. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy 16, $40. That also just came out this year. Yes. Oh, yeah. Final, we haven't seen Final Fantasy 16 yet on, yeah. on these deals. Yo, you can get a cordless uh, vacuum for a thousand dollars. What's <laughs> that about? A Dyson okay. V15. Why is it a thousand dollars? I don't know. Those Dyson vacuums are ludicrously expensive. Oh, I want... think it's also like a carpet cleaner. Okay. If you want a Dyson vacuum, go to Dyson's eBay shop, oh. where they sell certified refurbished for like half the price. Holy shit! Yeah, that's how I got mine. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, the Master Collection, $40. Oh. What's the deal with this collection? What do you mean? Like, do people like this collection? Or are people just mad that it's not like a Resident Evil 4 remake situation? People love to hate on any little thing that a, that happens with a port. Yeah. Like, if there's any little issue. Like, uh, I think the controls are a little fucked up on the PC. Okay. But, like, uh, you, you plug a controller in, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I... Also, the controls were the PC versions of these games had horrible controls right. to begin with, um, but it's still it's the old games, right? So you still get to play the old games with right. the new hardware. So it's good in that regard. Yeah, because it sounds like it's just it's a warts and all like port mm -hmm. rather than a full remaster or full remake, and like you know maybe they should have remastered them a little bit, but like at least we're getting the games. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is back on Amazon. Uh, I okay. forgot to mention this one. Uh, Carrie uh, Golomb, the fox, t tweeted this the other day, uh, mm -hmm. and I was it. I I thought about it. I thought about it for a second. We we don't talk about TVs because right. uh, there's so many. Yeah, and usually they're like a Black Friday special, like they make the TV specifically for Black Friday. Yes, uh, the one in my living room. Is a Black Friday special from 2019. Yes. And it's been great. The one in my living room was a Black Friday special. Yeah. And it's been fine. Uh, I will say, though, that my panel died. But during yeah. COVID, a guy came over and replaced the panel for free. So. Yeah. Whatever. Um, there's just so many TVs, it's hard to keep track of the good deals and whatever. Uh, this one, 98 inches. Jesus Christ. TLC, not the uh -huh. best. Yeah. Uh, 2,500. Okay. 98 inches though do people I don't have the wall space so i for sure don't yeah uh i don't want a big tv it seems like a waste yeah to just be moving your head back and forth to like you know see what's on the screen yeah but this would be a good led wall like when you're filming something yeah Put it on a wall and you can put whatever you want behind you. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You'd have to, like, if you were to game on that, you'd have to sit pretty far back, though. And I don't think anybody's. It'd be horrible for yeah. playing games. Unless you're and sitting far back. I'm sure there's input lag because it's a cheap 98 inch screen. What's the hertz on it? I don't know anything else about it other than it's 98 inches. Um, apparently, it's a 2023 model. Okay. Is it, was it 4K 60? Uh, it's 120 hertz. Okay. That's crazy. I don't think si the size of the screen really affects input lag 
in any way. No, I just usually cheap TVs that have well, cheap TVs, higher yeah. specs are shitty. 120 hertz is pretty yeah. goddamn good. I don't see anything about HDMI 2.1. I'm just kind of assuming it has that because it's 120 hertz. You'd hope. <laughs> because then what? how else would it do anything? This guy's watching Bluey on it. Hell yeah. That's how you want to watch your Bluey. It doesn't look that big in that picture. Huh. Interesting. Dang, that's a big-ass TV. Who needs a big TV that size, 98 inches? Wow. Again, I would just like it for a for a LED wall so you yeah. can film in front of it. That'd be pretty cool. All right. What else does Best Buy have? Anything? I mean, they uh, got the controllers, too. Yeah, I think those are the big ones. A couple headsets. If you need a headset. Uh, they're selling the... Uh, they're, I hate when they do this. Uh, the Xbox... Pulse Red controller is $45, but the Xbox Stellar Shift blue controller is $40. Yeah, there's a a couple of them are 40. So yeah. I, I guess I guess you could say that's cheaper than Amazon. I guess. But the red one was also 45 on Amazon. Yeah. The black Xbox controller though is 40. So if you just want a plain black controller. Hey, they got open box elite controllers. Ooh, $93. Pretty Interesting. Good. Uh, no deals on the core, on the elite core ones. Mm, that's... Scuff, they have a deal on the scuff one. How much is the scuff one? Two hundred dollars. Okay, <laughs> so that's not that good. Yeah. Um, they got some wild looking PDP controllers. Mm -hmm. Razer Wolverine Two, which is a controller I want to try because it's got clicky buttons. Uh, ninety dollars down from one hundred and fifty. There you so go. That's, that's a good, good deal. Okay, so they right. got the deal on the backbone controller. I think yeah. that's a pretty good deal. Well, for, for uh, Best Buy. yeah, I'm in Target. Okay, I shipped it over to Target. Target's got a good deal. You ready? I'm, I'm going to Target. I'm going to Target. All right. Uh, Xbox Series X Diablo Four bundle. It's four hundred and fifty. Okay. Plus a seventy-five dollar gift card. Oh, so you get the Xbox. Series X for four fifty, which is already yeah the same as what was it on Best Buy? Yeah, but you get Diablo four, mm -hmm. so that's already better. Yeah, and you get a seventy five dollar gift card that you can use on sodas. <laughs> yes, and Oreos. Yes, and toothpaste. Yeah, and Windex. Frames. I bought Windex at Target the other day. <laughs> Because I have kids who like to walk up to my window and just do this all over it. So that's good in that you can get $75 to buy anything with. Yeah. Uh, oh. They got the Animal Crossing. but Okay, so every... Oh, no, wait. The Animal Crossing bundle, I guess the pink version, is only available at Target. There you go. Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch Lite yes. bundle. $200. That's pretty good. So it's yeah. Coral Switch Lite. That has a... a Animal Crossing printed back on it. Yes. And you get the game Animal Crossing for free. Uh, here's another Target uh, deal. $10 off select gaming gift cards. 10% off. 10% off, yes. So if you get an Xbox, a PlayStation, a Nintendo, or a Roblox gift card, because mm -hmm. Roblox is popular, uh, you'll get 10% off. I, it says excludes Fortnite V-Bucks. Okay. <laughs> so don't even think about getting V-Bucks. Oh, apparently Walmart has the blue version of the Switch Lite. Got it. Cool. Uh, MetaQuest 2, $250. That's With pretty With a good. $50 gift card. Okay, so there $50 of free money. That's pretty good. I yeah. mean, the MetaQuest 3 is out, but the 2 is still good. Yeah. Uh, the Smash Bundle we know about. PlayStation 5 Slim is normal. Yeah. Uh, $50 on controllers is everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, $250 for the... Uh, Series Series S. S. That's the holiday bundle that comes with three months of Game Pass. Okay, that that I'm sure they have elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, now we're on to games. Yes. Forty dollars for Mortal Kombat, Resident Evil Four, Assassin's Creed Mirage, uh, Final Fantasy Fifteen. Yeah. Sixteen. Sixteen. Thirty dollars for Gran Turismo Seven, which is uh oh Hogwarts Legacy. Thirty dollars is that the best deal so far? I think so. That's the best deal on Hogwarts Legacy. Uh. And keep in mind, like, 
these are just like the games they're showing. If you if you actually go to Target, there might be more games available for these prices. Okay. Sonic Superstars 35. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's the best I've seen. So uh, if you were looking for Sonic Superstars, that almost makes it worth it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they got headsets. And shit. They got headsets. Uh, the Backbone controller, again, 70 bucks. Uh, the Xbox controller was cheaper at Best Buy for the black one. What Xbox controller? This one? Yeah. It was less less than 50 bucks? Oh, yeah. It was 40. The black one was... A lot of them were 40. Were 40. 40. Most of them were... The other ones were 50. Uh, And the PlayStation ones are all 50. No, no, no. The, the, the red one was 45. The red one was 45. The other ones are 50 on Best Buy? I thought they were forty five or forty. Oh no, they're all they're all cheaper on Best Buy. Yeah, Bat- right. Target. Don't get an Xbox controller at Target. Oh, and then they just go straight to TV. They go straight. To That's TVs. a fucking cheap TV. Two hundred and a uh, hundred and seven. Oh, what is it? High sense. That was a high sense. Hi, uh, they make my dehumidifier. Okay, <laughs> and it's it's a good dehumidifier. One hundred and eighty dollars for a fifty yeah. inch. Uh, Samsung fifty five inch, uh, three hundred dollars. I mm-hmm. like Samsung TVs. Some people don't. All right. Uh, that's that's all. That's I'll, good. That's all I'll go for. Okay. Uh, Walmart. Uh, almost like Target. Yeah. Uh, there's the blue two hundred dollar uh Switch light. Same deal on PlayStation controllers, uh, mm-hmm. fifty dollars. Uh, oh, oh, there's is a dollar off. Ooh, oh, I'm sorry, ninety nine cents off. There you go. Walmart. There's that. They got Walmart in some way. See price in cart. Fuck off. I hate that. Fifty five dollars for Mario Odyssey. That's not a good deal at all. No. Assassin's Creed Mirage, fifty bucks. Wasn't it forty? Yeah. Black, uh, Walmart's sucking right now. I'm shocked. I am sh- $50, $60 for Resident Evil 4. Where do they get off with That's this? That's just the price of the game. Yeah. Oh, wait. It says $30. What is this? It's saying it's saying $60, and then it says $30 on November 22nd in, like, small print. Oh, my God. So, hold on. I got to go back. This, this is, I'm very confused. Yeah. Uh, hold on. So so Just Dance says $39.97, $40 on November 22nd. This whole thing is fucked. All right. Don't shop at Walmart this year. Well, hold on. Super Mario Odyssey, $30 on November 22nd. Okay. Assassin's Creed Mirage, $40 on November 22nd. Uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? No, Breath of the Wild, uh, $30 on November 22nd. So it sounds like November 22nd is when the deals are, are happening. Okay. Holy shit. Uh, $30 for Resident Evil 4 on November 22nd. That's a pretty good deal. That's a better deal, yeah. Uh, Mortal Kombat, Hogwarts Legacy, $40. Uh, that's not that good. Uh, $40 for Sonic Superstars, not the best deal. We saw it better at Target. Sounds like Target might be better for a lot of these. Yeah. Uh, Sonic Frontiers, $40. All right, <laughs> fine. $45 for Xbox controllers. Still better at uh, Best Buy and yeah. Amazon. God of War Ragnarok, $30 on November 22nd. Um, what a weird pricing structure they have yeah. on a lot of these. Sonic Origins, is that plus? I yep, think so. That is $20. Yeah. So that's pretty good. $30 for Street Fighter Six. That's good. That's good. Wait, was that? Oh, Crash Team Rumble, $20. I thought that was the Nickelodeon game. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports is $30 uh, on November 22nd. Backbone controllers is $69, which is the same as the yeah. at Best Buy. And that's it. Okay. Walmart. Walmart. Confusing. Hor- horrible <laughs> circular. They had a terrible yeah. uh, uh, thing. Uh, all, right. all right, let's do GameStop. Okay. Uh, this is all games. So um, I'd imagine it's mostly what we've seen before. Where is it? Uh, I'm seeing save sixty dollars 
on PlayStation 5 with Spider-Man. Oh, it's the old PlayStation 5. Oh, okay. wow. So the Spider-Man bundle that... Spider-Man 2 bundle of the PlayStation 5 mm-hmm. that first launched uh, was $560. Now it's just $500. So you get the game for free. Okay. But that's not that great of a bundle because it's right. not the Spider-Man edition PlayStation 5. It's just the regular edition PlayStation 5 and it's the old edition. Yeah, yeah. and it just comes with Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, it's a probably a better deal to get the Slim with uh, Modern Warfare even if you don't want that game. Why do you say that? Because you get the game for free. And you get the slim version. Instead right, of having you, the old version. But they're also doing a slim version uh a slim bundle with Spider Man. Oh. Is that I think it costs more though. No, it costs the same. Five hundred dollars? Yeah. Oh, then get that. Yeah. What then this is dumb. This yeah. is stupid. <laughs> uh save money on controllers which i think is the same deal we've seen I, it's elsewhere the same, yeah yeah uh, uh, gamestop uh not gonna be that great yeah although if they advertise what they're selling used games for buy two going free on all pre-owned games there you go that could be a, a good deal yes although they usually do that at like uh target but i think we might have missed the boat on that they usually yeah. do that like right before black friday uh, here you go. You can get an Xbox One, the VCR version, with a 500 gig hard drive for 115 bucks. <laughs> All right, GameStop is a uh, is a bit of an L here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's been their their mantra for like the past few years. GameStop, a little bit of an L. So I, the sleeper hit on Black Friday, sometimes Coles. Because Kohl's gives you Kohl's they cash. They give you like $2,000 like $2, worth of Kohl's cash. But their gaming selection khakis. has been kind of lackluster these past few years. Yeah, but you can get a Nerf bazooka. No, a, ner- a Nerf Gatling gun for $30. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I don't see a gaming section at all on that yeah. thing. I'm seeing like, oh, just a bunch of random junk. Yeah, I'm about to give up on Coles. Yeah. They do have a lot of junk. They do. They do have espresso machines, though, I think. They got everything there, man. I need I need a knife set. They got a knife set. Don't don't buy knife sets. You you buy the knives a la carte because they're cheaper and better. I, I ended up doing that. I ended up getting I got I got two nice knives. I need actually like you know eating knives oh eating knives yeah all right i give up okay fuck coals uh <laughs> all right best deals so far best buy amazon target in a couple of cases target yes yes um, and i would say you know if you're if you're all in digital then uh hunt around on the the e-shop and the playstation network and xbox live you will find yes. you will you will find good stuff there yes. it's just there's a lot of shit and we're just two people, and we can't do it all. We can't do it all. Okay, moving on. We got mm-hmm. more. We got actual. We, news yes, we got a regularly about. scheduled podcast to do. Yes. Not gonna dig through Steam. No, there's so many no, fucking this, things on Steam. If you if you're a Steam user, if there's a bunch of games that you want, put them all on your wish list and mm-hmm. just wait. They go on sale all of the time. I'd imagine that a lot of the games we just talked about, if they're on Steam, they're probably also on sale. Yeah. Uh, breaking news, bro! Jet Force Gemini. I was just going to say to come for Nintendo Switch Online. I'm that- trying to. I'm trying to find like the actual Nintendo. Yeah, here it is. Uh, Adventure calls in the galaxy of Jet Force Gemini coming to Nintendo Switch for Switch Online plus expansion pack this December. I will play that game i will replay that i'm going to ruin everybody's day because i played that i replayed this when it was on rare replay a couple years ago when it came out and the controls do not translate (laughs) out of a nintendo 64 controller it was so bad microsoft had to issue a patch with modern controls okay to like attempt to make the game playable so that's 
not gonna happen here <laughs> they're not it's this is gonna be a faithful adaptation i know so i'm letting you all know now if you're not playing this game with a nintendo 64 controller you're going to have a bad time yes but uh, other than that you know classic of the of the system just a weird game i remember really liking it when it was out um i want to replay it i know it's not gonna be like great by modern standards no but there's a there's a lot going on in that game it's just you know the different paths you could take and the different endings you can get and all that shit right i i just went to amazon to see if the retro fighters controller for it you know, like the N64 style controller for the Nintendo Switch. I went to see yeah. if that was on sale, and it's not. Ah. Sorry, bros. Uh, so this comes out in December. Okay, so yes. we don't know when. No. Uh, cool. All right, anyway. Uh, let's go to... Oh, more breaking news. Uh, I put this in here. Yes. This Game Boy-inspired handheld can play PSP, Nintendo DS, and Dreamcast games. This is the retro... I'm sorry, the Anbernic RG35XX Plus. This is a newer version of the 35XX that was uh, one of my favorite consoles from earlier this year. Now, there's a Plus version, because mm -hmm. of course there is. A Game Boy that can run PSP N60... I'm sorry, PSP Nintendo DS and Dreamcast games would be any millennial's dream handheld. So Anbernic is delivering just that with its latest device, the RG35XX Plus, which follows up on the popular non-plus model. That's a good way to put it. The plus in the RG35XX Plus implies the Game Boy-inspired handheld has a more powerful CPU that enables it to run more demanding retro handheld and consoles. The RG35XX could only run up to PS1 games and not always with playable frame rates and controls. I will say it did pretty good with, with PlayStation 1. It's also been modded to play DS games. I think the RG35XX, correct me if I'm wrong, I know the Miu Mini has, so I'm pretty sure the RG35XX has been modded to play DS games. Uh, I don't think it would play good PSP or Dreamcast games, but uh, this is yeah, being it, designed it for that. It doesn't so. have an analog stick, and most Dreamcast and PSP games use the analog stick. Good point. I feel like a lot of Dreamcast stuff would be fine on a D-pad. Dreamcast, no. No? PSP, maybe. Yeah, PSP, yes. Yeah. Uh, but Dreamcast, no. Just because you don't use the D-pad ever in a Dreamcast game. So, like, if if the, if they're... Well, because the analog stick was in the more prominent spot. Yeah, but if, if they're going to make it... If they're going to do the thing where uh, you can force the D-pad to act like an analog stick, I feel like you'd be fine. I feel like it's not mm -hmm. that part of a translation. Hopefully not. Um... Anyway, in Ambernick's official debut video, the RG35XX, uh, we can see the handheld... I, I guess they mean the Plus. Mm -hmm. We can see the handheld running everything from Ridge Racer PSP to Metal Slug 7, which is a Nintendo DS game, to Crazy Taxi on the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, okay, I mean... I guess that's as much as we need to read of this. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting it any minute now. Uh, they upgraded it to support... Bluetooth 4.2 and Wi-Fi, which will allow the player uh, allow for multiplayer game compatibility. I'd imagine multiplayer on this thing would be very bad. Um, but you'd probably have some streaming. Uh, it does have HDMI out. Uh, wireless controllers are supported, so I guess you could plug it into a TV and and mm -hmm. use it Bluetooth. Uh, people like Wi-Fi on these things because it helps you. Uh like download uh box art for all of your roms and shit and it yeah. helps like curate it a little better so that's the better reason for wanting wi-fi uh orders start on november 25th so what is that friday yes no that's saturday saturday okay cool oh and it will be it will likely come cost more than the previous 50 to 60 dollar price tag i'm gonna guess 90 dollars. that's okay. my guess All right, so keep a lookout for that. It looks exactly like the original RG35XX, but uh, now it can just play more. Mm -hmm. So there you go. 
Uh, yo, how the fuck do you say this guy's name? <laughs> Don't kill me, please. Oh, that was easier than I thought it would be. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Thank you. I appreciate it. Are you doing an I'd own a two video? If not, you should. It's incredible. It is sitting in a box right there. One of those boxes? One of those boxes. Okay. I just, there's too many things. Okay. This week is the PlayStation Portal. Next week, I'm doing another Lenovo video. And then maybe I'll do the I know it in two video. I don't know if I'm going to do a gift guide. I always do a gift guide. Maybe I just won't. The problem, though, is that I can do affiliate links and then right. get a lot of money. But I got a lot of other videos I, I, I need to make. All right, uh, we're gonna talk about a Suicide Squad update. Yeah, it had a it had a big update. Uh, it uh, they're going on the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League Redemption tour. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League developer Rocksteady has revealed a new look at its upcoming live service game, revealing more of the story, which pits its infamous Task Force X against their heroic counterparts. As seen in previous trailers, Suicide Squad takes place after the Justice League mounts an ill-fated attack on Brainiac and winds up getting mind-controlled in the process, giving the alien super genius a major tactical advantage in his assault on Metropolis. How do you stop several walking weapons of mass destruction? By calling in a team of black ops supervillains to take down heroes and put their necks out on the line if they want to earn early parole. Also, someone in Metropolis really hates the squad, judging by the F-bombs thrown around at them. The first episode of the Suicide Squad Insider shows off an early portion of the game as Captain Boomerang, Harley Quinn, King Shark, and Deadshot find themselves inside Metropolis. After raiding the Hall of Justice for hardware that'll help them explore the city, the squad has its first encounter with two Justice Leaguers, the Flash and Green Lantern, and they quickly discover that they'll need some powerful weapons to take down the heroes. Fortunately, the Penguin has set up shop in Metropolis and has an arsenal of anti-metahuman hardware. Rocksteady also showed off more of its gameplay and how each squad member can leverage their unique skills to wipe out Brainiac's drones if in, uh, of, infecting, of infected Metropolis citizens. Each member is highly mobile, uh, and they have the they have an ultimate finishing move that can KO that can one shot KO any enemy it's used on. Each character has an iconic attack that can be used to break enemy shields and juggle them, setting up setting them up to take guaranteed critical hit damage from all weapons for a short duration. Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League has had several delays since it was first announced, and it was originally meant to come out in May. In April, Rocksteady announced that the game had been delayed until February 2nd of next year. This this demo, that, or I mean, this video is 20 minutes long. Yeah, so what it basically is, it's a dev diary mm -hmm. explaining the concept of the game and like the beginning and how it went, and basically like the setup of it, like the story, what the world is going to be. The Metropolis in this game is two times bigger than uh, Gotham was in Arkham Knight. Mm -hmm. And it shows off like, you know, the basic traversal of each character, um, how it's very story focused. Um, and just essentially what she'll be doing moment to moment in the game. This is this is part of a, like a like a four part series. It's basically them trying to get you hyped for a game that you were not hyped about earlier this year. So this is why, that's why I called it the Redemption Tour because they really want you to buy this game. What's the live service part? Uh, it's it's a multiplayer game. So like you and up to three people can play as the Suicide Squad, and like you can custom you, like you can buy cosmetics. You can like buy weapons that are like 0.1 percent higher than this one and that one, and all. it's like that kind of live service game. So like the failed Avengers game. Yes. What a great idea. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will say like, actually, no, I won't say it because I don't, I'm not really that if excited. If it was just a regular fucking game, it if doesn't it look bad. Fuck, honestly, if, even if it was like a multiplayer game, like you and four people can team up to play against the fight against the Justice League. Like that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Like the live service aspect doesn't help. And also the fact that this looks I'll say it again. I've been saying this whole time. It looks like a carbon copy of Sunset Overdrive, which I didn't like. Uh, it, the fact that it looks like Sunset Overdrive kind of makes me interested. Like, it makes it unique, but, like, I didn't like Sunset Overdrive. Right. So, like, it's not really selling me on the game. I will say this tra this um, this dev diary, like, really emphasizes it's going to have, like, a lot of story to it, which it does look like it has, which... You know the movement makes no sense. I don't well, know yeah, what no. the fuck I was just looking at. Well, I think Captain Boomerang steals um something that makes them as fast as the Flash. 
Yeah, and he like teleported too. Well, he's, he's he, like, running dashed. so he's he, like, like running so fast. Okay. Um, Deathstroke, no, Deadshot gets a jetpack. Harley Quinn gets a grappling hook. But the grappling hook looks like it connects to nothing. Yeah. It's like a weird like. It's like Spider Man One for the PS One. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of story in this game, and there's a lot of cutscene, which is weird for a live service game, which traditionally like don't have like a lot of focus on story and cutscenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Avengers tried that, but the story was really only in the beginning and towards the end. Everything else was just faffing about. I mean, this could do that too. True. Well, no, I mean, I, I'd imagine you have to go through all of the Justice League, and yeah, they would all have part of the story. I mean, it looks interesting, but the I'm worried about the live service. Yeah, stuff, but that's this not this appealing is. At all. This is a thousand percent a wait for the reviews to come out. And even then, like, wait a couple more months because if this really is going to be a live service game, it's going to be, you know, it's going to have problems. It's going to be buggy AF and, it, you know, it's just not going to work properly. Yeah. So, you know, temper your expectations. So far, like, nothing they're showing off is, like, causing the game to do a 180 in people's mind, mm-hmm. you know? It just it looks a little bit better than it did previously. All right, we got uh, Sm- Samps. Thanks for the three months. I appreciate it. Do you have to play multiplayer, or can you play with computers? Uh, I believe it, you can do single player and uh, you know single player with bots. Okay. Yeah, and I think you could switch between the uh, the suicide the suicide squad members at any time. That's good. So yeah. Warner Brothers denies that Wonder Woman will be a live service game. Okay, yes. Uh, so on the heels of this, uh, a monolith job production, a monolith production's job listing suggests the upcoming Wonder Woman game will have a live service element, but Warner Brothers is saying that it's focused squarely on single player, as reported by uh, WCCF Tech. Monolith of Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor fame is currently looking for a lead software engineer of gameplay on Wonder Woman and wants a, the candidate to have experience in helping maintain a live software product or game live service games are supported long after launch with seasonal expansions and often have microtransactions for other elements like cosmetics and weapons popular examples include fortnite and warzone uh, but others like destiny 2 also incorporate story campaigns uh, this comes despite wonder woman being announced as a single player open world action game featuring an original story with neither developer monolith nor warner brothers games mentioning live service elements previously Warner Brothers responded uh, with a statement to IGN denying it will be a live service game. Uh, Quote, Wonder Woman is a single player action adventure game set in a dynamic open world. This third person experience will allow players to become Diana Themyscira and introduce an original story set in the DC universe while also featuring the Nemesis system. Wonder Woman is not being designed as a live service game. Previously, Warner Brothers CEO and big asshole uh, CEO (laughs) David Zaslav said the company is focused on transforming our biggest franchises from largely console and PC based with three to four year release schedules to include more always on gameplay through live services, multi-platform and free to play extensions with the goal to have more players spending more time on platforms. Fellow DC title Suicide Squad Kill Dust League is at the helm of that approach with Warner Brothers games confirming in February, the previously thought story-based game will have uh, without the four player co-op will be a live service game. So do we believe them that Wonder Woman will not be a live service I game? I want to believe them because it makes all the sense in the world for Wonder Woman to be a single player game like Arkham was. If it has like DLC and like add-ons and cosmetics, fine, cuz Arkham had that, you can buy costumes, you can buy Batmobiles, you can buy uh f- level packs for um for the VR missions and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Have all the fucking add-ons you want. But for the main core game, that should not be live service. That should just be a regular-ass game where you run around an open world and you you beat up people with the Nemesis system. Like what Shadow of Mordor was. So I'm willing to believe that it was going to be a live service game. And then they saw what was going on with... uh, the Suicide Squad, and they were like, "Ah, eh, maybe we don't need it to be live service." See, I it's doing the opposite of what the Avengers and what the Suicide Squad trajectory was. See, I would not be surprised if the opposite winds up happening, where it was supposed to be a single player only game with maybe like you know you can buy like a new outfit for it or whatnot, and then you know David Zaslav comes in, you know, 
who doesn't know anything about how to make movies go can't yes it will cancel Batgirl even though the Flash is a steaming pile of shit we'll release that um, and you know he's saying on earnings calls like we're gonna make more live service games hey you have a Wonder Woman game coming out throw some live service in that mm-hmm. so we we don't have a release date for Wonder Woman we don't know when that's coming out but as it gets closer to release start like. Keep your eyes open and your ears open for like signs of life service because like they'll sneak it in there. Yeah, I mean historically we've seen them take live, take a game and then a regular old single player game and be like shove some live service into yeah. that. We've seen that the most. Yeah, uh, I feel like there was a certain point where Warner Bros. was like everything's got to be live service yeah. no matter what, and I'm hoping that they're realizing that that's well, not I a think great. Most of the industry is realizing that live service games is not the way of the future. Because, like, there's only, like, four or five live service games that everybody plays and everything else is just, you know, going out to die in the ether. It's the same industry trap we see all of the time where there's one or two games that are huge blockbuster hits that make a lot of money. And then the whole industry is like, we need to be the new version of that. Mm -hmm. And that is just so impossible to capture that lightning in a bottle. Yeah. And uh, they end up shooting themselves in the foot by trying to take a game that otherwise would have been great and turn it into something that it never should have been. Yeah. Instead of creating a unique experience. A lot of times, these games like Fortnite are as big as they are because they are a unique experience. Yeah. But like... Although I shouldn't say that because Fortnite kind of did change the whole game to be more like other games. Well, (laughs) by that token... You know, Fortnite was such a big hit, and now every game studio wants their own Fortnite. Yeah. But I don't want, like, a different version of Fortnite because I'm already playing Fortnite. Yes, yes. You know, that's the problem. But I didn't want a different version of PUBG. And then you got Fortnite. And then I got Fortnite, <laughs> yeah. and you know what? It was, it was by better, all accounts, yeah. better. It was just better than uh, PUBG. Anyway. Uh, uh, all right. Next, Embracer Group. Fire. Doing the... Doing they're copying other studios. Yeah. They're copying other... Swedish mega publisher, the Embracer Group, has laid off more than 900 people as it looks to mitigate a massive $1.3 billion debt. They said, you know what? This is working out for every other game company that's making billion-dollar yes. blockbusters. What we need to do is fire everybody. Yes. Uh, with these cuts and more to come, Embracer expects to lower that number to below $1 million by fiscal year's end. The company, which is known for rapid expansion and industry consolidation, has has 15,701 employees as of late September, according to its latest financial reports. Embrace expected to sign a $2 billion deal with the Saudi Arabian government funded. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Remember that? I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, the deal fell through forced and forced Embracer to quickly cut its costs due to its aggressive overexpansion and spendy IP acquisitions. Embracer expects to continue to reduce its headcount uh, via ongoing restructuring, closures, or buyouts. Massive cuts have already been made at Time Splitters developer Free Radical Design, Star Trek Online's Cryptic Studios, Tomb Raider developer Crystal Dynamic, and Myth 4 Studio Bean Dog, as well as uh, full studio closures at Stains Row developer Volition, which just celebrated its 30th anniversary, and the newly established Campfire Cabal, among others. Um, Borderlands developer Gearbox Entertainment is just one of Embracer Studios that is reportedly up for sale. These are difficult decisions, and we do not uh, make them lightly, uh, CEO Lars Wingsforce wrote shortly before pointing out Embracer is focused on maximizing shareholder value. He continued, for me personally, it is crucial that the program is carried out over com- uh, with compassion, respect, and integrity. Along with the job cuts, Embracer also shut down development on 15 main unannounced projects from Amplifier, Free Mode, Gearbox, Play On, Saber, and THQ Nordic. Perhaps because of these cuts, Embracer reported a 13% increase in its net sales year over year for its second quarter alongside all the bad news. Embracer's confirmation of its hundreds of job loss uh, comes in a week where uh, each day brought announcement of another layoff. Amazon Games, 505 Games owner Digital Brothers Entertainment, Congregate, and Humble Bundle all laid off workers this week. More than 7,000 people per an industry tracker have been laid off so far in 2023. That's crazy. That's insane. That is, like, at this rate, that we are expected to have a video game crash in the next two years. Like, Companies cannot keep bleeding employees like this. I can't imagine a video game crash. Um, 
because the industry is doing so good right now. Th th that's the problem is that it's all of tech. All of the companies are doing really good and firing people anyway. Right. Because they're like, they're spending, you know, the wrong, you know, they're spending money on all the wrong things. They're yeah. like massively expanding without like putting anything out to help recoup the cost of the expansion. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, what was it? Atlas, you know, had a great year and they gave everybody raises. <laughs> if Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out next year, mm -hmm. uh, even if no one else makes a game, mm -hmm. that will carry the entire games industry. <laughs> Like if 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 it is if it was true that all of these game companies were doing bad, yeah. Grand Theft Auto Six comes out, no one will notice that all yeah. the other companies are doing bad, because true. Grand Theft Auto will, yeah, carry so much of the game. But like I read somewhere, like Larian, you know, due to the success of Baldur's Gate, they are like have a big swell of income now. Mm -hmm. But rather than expand, they are slowing down production. So that they can maintain consistency and p keep putting out quality games that people actually want to play, rather than going out and expanding any more people and just you know creating the mess that Embracer Group found themselves in. I don't see an issue with expanding a little bit if you have some success. You just have to do it in smart ways, in ways that aren't wasteful. Yeah, and there none of these companies have been doing it in smart ways. Yeah, they've been trying to downsize. They've been making a lot of money and then downsizing. Uh. Well, when Epic went through the layoffs, one of the things they said was, you know, we expanded too much. We bought Bandcamp. Why did Epic Games buy <laughs> Bandcamp? Yeah, it was stupid. Yeah, and then they sold Bandcamp, and the new owners, like, laid off everybody. Anyway. So there you uh, go. Things suck. This wasn't in one of the articles, but I just saw this on the sidebar on Polygon, and I thought it was interesting. Uh, controversial pay-to-win Gaia skin will be temporarily removed from Modern Warfare. So... Uh, when I was first playing Modern Warfare 3, I noticed this skin, which looks like Groot. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was so dumb because it glows <laughs> red. And like, it's so obvious to see, like, to yeah. see this monster glowing red in the game. It's like such an eyesore. They're calling this pay to win because it blends in with the background because it's a tree. I think it stands out like a sore thumb. Maybe there's a, there's a variant that doesn't glow red, but it, it, seems like an issue it's it's it seems like it's the opposite of pay to win it seems like you're nerfing yourself by using it i mean apparently not <laughs> i guess enough people like complain that it blended into the background uh, very strange very very strange there's some cool like anime skins so there's a hell helsing uh, uh yeah uh, skins that look really cool anyway uh also i wanted to bring this up back to uh uh the Nintendo Switch Online games, uh -huh. Jeff Force Gemini coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, it is coming to the Japanese Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. On November 30th. Okay. So a little earlier than what we're getting. Also, they are getting GoldenEye yes. on November 30th, which uh, apparently they didn't have and I didn't know. Oh, I didn't want that to play. Oh, no, no, that's But it. they have footage of uh, Jeff Force Gemini. They didn't have footage uh, in the American yeah, no. announcement. That's widescreen. That is widescreen. Did this <laughs> game support widescreen? I doubt it. Is that stretched? GoldenEye supported widescreen on the N64. This is not stretched. This okay. is legitimate. Yeah. It did support it on the yeah, N64? Yeah, what it did was it made everybody skinny, and then like it would stretch out to fill the screen. Oh. Uh, widescreen, yeah. I think that the widescreen that Nintendo Switch Online uses is different. Okay. It's a different type of widescreen. This is straight up widescreen. Yeah uh okay cool that's cool i mean it looks great yeah i'm into that i want to i want to play that again see if it, it holds up uh so that'll be november 20 uh november 30th on the japanese nintendo yeah. switch online which uh you can access i think yeah anyway Baldur's gate oh, the, deluxe sure edition, is the deluxe edition is coming and it includes a fuck ton of discs direct quote Larian Studios has announced that Baldur's Gate 3 Deluxe Edition would package uh, an extensive selection of bonus goodies up with physical disc copy of the game. This Deluxe Edition includes a physical copy of the game on your platform of choice, plus a bunch of what Larian is calling physical feel, uh, feelies. In what the, the grand uh, CRPG tradition, those goodies include a CD soundtrack, uh, cloth map world, cloth world map uh, poster, 
sorry, no, a cloth world map, comma, poster, comma, two fabric patches, and 32 stickers, plus a big box created in the style of the original series. Uh, you'll also get all the digital bonuses typically included in the existing digital deluxe edition. What is a CRPG? Computer RPG. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this experiment is what we feel is the future of physical media will look like, at least for us at Larian. Publishing director Michael Dow says in a press release, we spent the last few months learning how to do it from scratch and putting everything we learned from the collector's edition into what we hope is an unbeatable value for we, for we are considering our standard physical version going forward. If it works, we will we'll keep doing we will keep doing it this way. We understand the value of physical media, and while there are clearly increasingly significant challenges when it comes to archiving of games, we truly believe it's worth experimenting, even if it means a fuck ton of discs. Okay, so PlayStation 5 looks like two discs. Uh, place, uh, Xbox yes. Series is three. It's two discs on PS5 and three on Xbox Series X, plus three more discs for the CD soundtrack. So why is it more on Xbox? Uh, also, that's not that many discs. <laughs> Xbox three discs, kind of a lot for these days. Well, the whole keep in mind the whole collection comes with a three CD soundtrack, so you're getting okay that, five to six discs. If we're putting them all together, yeah. that's a lot of discs. Uh, on console, the game is fully playable on disc. On CD, on PC, you do get a DVD, but it simply uh, includes the custom installer to help redeem the Steam code. And it'll be available for eighty dollars in the first first quarter of next year. I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to see what Xbox 360 game had the most discs. Uh, I know that Final Fantasy. I think LA 13 no- had four. La Noir had four. There's got to be a five yeah, disker. There's got to be a five disker. Wolfenstein: The New Order had four. Okay. Yeah, that was a 360 game. Okay. I have a list here, and I'm, I'm looking through it now. Okay. Blue Dra- Dragon had three. Uh, GTA 5's boxed PC copy that you can still buy has nine DVDs. Mm. <laughs> How many was it on 360? It was only two, right? On, I don't on know. On 360. Oh, we have the PS3 version. Yeah, we have the PS3. I, I don't know, to yeah. be honest. I think this list is missing Final Fantasy. I remember Battlefield 3 had a weird thing where it had an install disc and then a play disc and then another disc just for multiplayer. Oh. Yeah. So this is saying that Final Fantasy 13 only had three discs, so okay. I'm misremembering that. I guess the most is four on yeah. uh, on Xbox 360. I was imagining uh, uh, more. Yeah. Surprised there wasn't a 5-1. Uh okay. Well, let's talk about The Last of Us Remastered. The, I'm sure everybody's been waiting to hear about the this. The team one. here at Naughty Dog is excited to announce The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, the definitive way to experience the acclaimed Last of Us sequel originally released in 2020. We're thrilled to confirm you won't have to wait longer for it either. Players can jump into Ellie and Abby's emotional journeys on the PlayStation 5 on January 19th, 2024. Is there a list of features? Uh I don't, th- I don't know if there's a list. I mean, this this apparently goes on forever. <laughs> yeah. Part two remastered. I did see that you, if you have the original, which we do, yes, you can just pay ten bucks. Yes, it's a ten dollar upgrade. upgrade. That is very good. Yes. I, I like that. Um, trying to see. Here's a Verge article. Yeah. Um, so there's a roguelike mode that yes. a lot of people are talking about. Uh, f- Free guitar play mode. <laughs> you just pick up a, the guitar and play it, which I think is funny. Yeah. Uh, a brand new mode called No Return, a roguelike survival mode designed to let players prove their metal in randomized encounters and experience The Last of Us Part II's combat in a fresh experience. The mode includes a host of playable characters to choose from, some playable for the first time in The Last of Us franchise. Um who each come with their own traits to suit their different play styles. Players will chart their own course on each run, choosing between various stealth and combat encounters that will pit you against a range of enemies. 
with unique twists that can add new unexpected factors to any given encounter. That would be really, really cool if it was online multiplayer. Yeah. Just playing that by yourself sounds dumb. Each, each run will uh, offer a new chance to decide what rewards you get with each encounter, how you spec out your character and more, unlock more character skins and more as you progress to use in the mode, customize your own runs and compete on a global leaderboard as part of a daily run. We're excited to share more about No Return as we get closer. So uh, there's also some incomplete levels that were cut from the game that they've, I guess, finished yeah. and, and put in this one. Uh and there's a speed run mode. It's uh, a lot of stuff they're adding, uh, but I mean, this feels like uh, we don't. We this isn't necessary. This isn't a necessary <sighs> thing to to have to, to to remaster. You know. Yeah, but by them calling it like the, a remaster, it makes it sound like it's going to be a whole new game. This should be called. Uh, it should be definitive called, edition or something. This should be called Last of Us Part Two playstation 5 upgrade because okay. that's what it is yeah that's what it is yeah. you could buy it on its own but if you already own it you pay the ten dollars and you upgrade it yeah calling it remastered is stupid yeah. they, they even show pictures of like the before and after and uh they're not they're not that different they're not different like at all no like it's that it's the the office meme they're the same picture so actually uh yeah, PlayStation doesn't uh, show them, show yeah. the difference. I I've seen them on other websites, yeah. I think, the before and after. And yeah, they look exactly the same. So uh, it's dumb. I mean, I mean, I thought The Last of Us won the PS4 version and then the remastered PS5 version. That yeah. looked exactly the same to yeah. me. Uh, this looks even more closer together. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, if you've never played The Last of Us Part Two, sure, why not? Yeah. Uh, I never finished it. I got all the way to the end and then kind of got bored and stopped playing because they made me play as a character I didn't want to play as. Yeah. Uh, I finished it. It's they they really want they really try to go for like the emotionally manipulative ending, mm -hmm. but like it, the whole game is just so gross and mean spirited and like you know violent for the sake of like using violence and darkness in in as a way of like being deep without actually being deep so i like so. the first game so much but it's because they make you really like the characters yeah. and then they hit you with the nasty shit at the end and it yeah. like throws you through a loop but it's like cool the way that they do it in this one they make you hate everybody the whole time yeah <laughs> i, I you, mean you know that everyone's a horrible person and then you just think that the whole time. I maintain if the entire game was just Abby's quest, it would have been a better game. Because A, it would have been shorter, and B, like, you'd be introduced to this whole new character, and yeah. then the twist that you're the daughter of the doctor that Joel killed in the first game, and Ellie's on the hunt for you because of what you did. Spoilers. Like, <laughs> I read a comment from last week's show where, mm -hmm. like, someone yelled at me for spoiling The Last of Us. Which 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 Last of Us? The first one. Oh, yeah, because okay. we were talking about like the TV show and stuff, uh, and someone was like, "You should really say spoiler warning for something like that." Blah blah blah. And guess what this trailer did? In the first thirty seconds, guess what the trailer spoiled? What? The end of The Last of Us, <laughs> where Joel walks into the doctor's the operating room and kills everybody. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry. I remembered that I didn't finish The Last of Us Part Two because I think maybe it was this trailer. You see the fight between Abby and Ellie. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't play that. Yeah. I just knew that was going to happen. So I just stopped playing. And it's, I was like, I know where this is going. And it's 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 a it's a gross ending. It's 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 like I said, like they're they're using darkness and like violence as a quick way for like depth and meaning when like that's not how that works yeah you can't just be dark and violent and expect there to be you know prestige to it uh so i wouldn't like this game if it was all abby if they pulled a metal gear solid 2 where they make you think you're playing as one character and then they shove another character in your face okay if they marketed the whole game as playing as abby i might have liked it yeah um if i played this whole game as ellie i would have liked it 
Okay. The fact that they do a bait and switch in the middle of the game, I don't like that. They do a bait and switch in the middle of the game, and then you basically have if to they play. Marketed it as being both characters. Yeah. I might have liked it. They don't only like do a bait and switch. You, you play just as long as Abby as you do Ellie. Yeah. And like that should have what should have been the end point of a regular game. They make you do the entire game again. <laughs> it's like a. It's like a weird social experiment because, yeah. because they they put you on one side of the battle and then they put you on the other side. Yeah. Um, which would be fine, but I like you. You kind of want to. That's what made the first one so good is that you're rooting for these people and then at the end they kind of betray you. Yeah. And this one, uh, you're rooting for these people and then they make you play for ten hours of, of, yeah. on the other side. <laughs> against the people you were just rooting for so it was it's i'm not I, w I wasn't into it anyway uh i'm not getting that okay i yeah. still have to watch the ending on youtube because <laughs> i'm not gonna play it uh I, I i you know i would get the upgrade if the roguelike version had online that sounds fun there's another thing that bothers me about the upgrade and we've talked mm -hmm. about this before but if this was on xbox this upgrade would be free. Yeah. Because yeah. Xbox just gives you the next gen upgrade. Yep. No questions asked. Sony ha still has this weird, not really weird. They're still in the mindset of like the PlayStation 4 was one console. The PlayStation 5 is a totally separate well, console. I when we were looking at the Black Friday deals, a yeah. lot of the games were cheaper because they were the PS4 versions. Yeah. And you don't see that on Xbox. No, because it's all one system. Yeah. You know, Xbox is living, you know, in a more modern world where people carry their stuff from device to device to device. Mm -hmm. Sony is still in the every console generation is a clean break. Yeah. You know, yes, there's backwards compatibility, but, you know, they really don't see that as a selling point. They right. see that as just, you know, another thing they can add to the box. Yeah, this should be just a little thing to sweeten the deal for people who are already yeah. playing The Last of Us, you know, and it's a good reason to jump back in. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's plow through these last three stories. All here. right. Good, yeah, because the next one actually has bullet points that I can just read. Okay. All right. Xbox is on track to knock Sony PlayStation down to third place for the first time in history. I find this hard to believe. With combined Activision and Xbox revenues, Sony PlayStation may be looking at third place software and service spots behind Microsoft for the first time. Okay. Software. All right. Bullet points. Microsoft and Sony have long been uh, intense rivals in the high-end console gaming market with Sony typically out in forefront by almost every metric. Despite Xbox console market share woes, Microsoft has found a ton of success in expanding across PC and doubling down on services. Now that Microsoft has acquired Activision Blizzard, makers of Call of Duty, Microsoft may be on course to leapfrog Sony's gaming revenues for the first time in history. Tencent remains the top dog by a mile, owning... Uh, owing to investments in companies like Epic Games, uh, domination in China, mobile titles, and ownership of League of Legends, Riot. So, basically, Microsoft is not selling more Xboxes than Sony is selling PlayStations. Right. But because they now own Activision Blizzard, technically, they're selling more software than Sony is totally. So, therefore, they're making more money than Sony is totally yeah i understand that now uh they're not gonna all of a sudden start selling more consoles sony is ahead by like a long shot yeah. for console sales but this is good for them because uh they need the uh gaming money like yes. like i mean they're still a big huge company uh but uh they haven't been doing good with games no uh, that's why they've been buying up software because yeah. if they can't make it with console sales they'll do it with software uh, next is new leak GTA 5 database. What? Bully 2? Yes. Uh, a program database file for GTA 5 has reportedly leaked, shedding light on some seemingly scrap, uh, scrap plans. Files holds debug and project state information that a debugger can work with, and fans have been using it to uncover trade uh, traces of code that appear to refer to abandoned concepts. Uh, it's not currently known how old the database file is, as reported by Twitter user um, 
sure. Uh, the file includes a text string which contains references to Bully 2 along with other titles such as GTA 4, Midnight Club Los Angeles, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, it's also noted that the file makes reference to Trevor with a jetpack, which is said as evidence... I got an ad pop-up. Which is said to be evidence that story DLC planned for the game was abandoned and reworked into GTA Online missions. In this case, the Doomsday Heist mission. Another Twitter user... Uh, Glow Devs points out that the database has numerous references to CNC, which appears to be a planned cops and crooks mode. Although the mode was never officially confirmed, Bloomberg's Jason Schreier reported last year that it was going to split players into police officers and criminals, but was quietly shelved after the murder of George Floyd by police officers in 2020. Good idea. You know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they canceled Bully 2. If there was going to be a Bully 2 and they just canned it. Yeah. It sounds like there was going to be, but then it was all hands on deck for GTA 5, and they've just been working on that ever since. And Red Dead Redemption. And Red Dead Redemption, yeah. But that's, that's it. That's yeah. all they've been doing. Yeah. 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 The, entire, the entire PS4, Xbox One generation, the only released, the only new game they released was GTA, no, it was Red Dead Redemption 2. They know how much money they're going to make on Grand Theft Auto 6, and, and they, the whoever's making the decisions over there just does not feel like it's worth it to make a smaller game, which is incredibly sad. Yeah. Cause like they have the money where like they could make a smaller game and yep. regardless of how that game does, you know, at least they'll have another thing in their portfolio. Yeah. I mean, you need stuff like that just to even keep the people who work for you creatively fulfilled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Valve half-life's 25th anniversary. Valve Here you has go. Marked have a new game. Valve has marked the 25th anniversary of Half-Life with several promotional promotions and concept, uh, content drops, including an extensive update for the original game. As details on as detailed on the new 25th anniversary site, Valve has added new multiplayer maps, restored oh. content, and uh, graphic options, and full Steam Deck compatibility. Valve is also mar uh, marking the occasion by making Half-Life free to keep for anyone adding it to their Steam library this weekend, putting the rest of the games in the franchise on discount. Uh, I grabbed it because it was free. Was I got to see if I have it. Yeah. I, I think I do. Finally, Valve has released an hour-long documentary made in partnership with Secret Tape uh, in which the original development team share their memories of creating Valve's first game. Uh, the last Half-Life game, the VR title Half-Life Alex, was released in 2020. According to a report published in late 2021, Half-Life 3 was not in active development at the time, and Valve was instead focusing on Steam Deck-friendly titles. Apparently, the uh, Sir Newt Muscat says Danny O'Dwyer of Noclip uh, made the documentary. That's linked in this article. Yes. I want to watch that. Yeah, me too. I have it in my watch later. It's an yeah. hour long. Yeah. Uh, there were some memes that came out of that too, out of that documentary. Oh, it was there? Yeah. Uh, I am now looking at the store to see if it's still uh, free. Half-Life 1. It's such a good game. Half-Life 2 is a dollar. Dude! Half-Life 1 is uh, also a dollar. Oh, so, all right, so it's not free anymore. It's not free still, anymore. Still, a dollar. Unless maybe this is the Mac version, because I'm on my Mac. Well, you buy it, and then, you know, you get it for everything, then. Yeah, you do. Uh, Yeah, it's a dollar. Fuck, I might just buy it. And it has updated controls for the Steam Deck, yeah. which is interesting. Uh, I didn't know it had new multiplayer maps. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because... How much is Half-Life Alex? I need to buy that, because uh, I... I $20. I love Half Life and I've never played Alex. Yeah, uh, and Alex is like the one game. Like I definitely want to play Alex. And everyone's saying that's the best VR game. Yeah, in existence. So that's sixty six percent off. It's twenty dollars. I think so. I might just buy Half Life too. I I know like you know me more so than you. But like especially nowadays, but like we're console gamers. Mm -hmm. Like we love playing on console because playing on PC is like kind of dumb. <laughs> um, <laughs> But like Half Life Two is like genuinely one of the best video games ever made. Yep. I fucking love that game. That yep. is a, that is a work of art. Half Life Two. Yep. It is so good. And it holds up. It's, it does. it's incredible it's, how much it holds up, considering like how primitive like the games industry was at the time. But like it, it is incredible too. Not only how much it holds up, but like how so many people like it took forever for everybody to catch up to Valve yeah. and what they were doing in terms of storytelling, in terms of like facial animation and things like that yeah that game looked new for like 10 15 years yeah <laughs> after it came out it was incredible oh my god um all right that's uh 
all the news that we have. That is. I, uh, which means it's time. Well, for I didn't you, know. It's time I'm, for you to find. It's time for me to find the tweet of the week because yeah. I completely forgot. Uh, but in the meantime, you know what? We will uh, look. In, we will talk to you guys. Yes. We'll talk to people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Starting with Etre. I would lose my mind if I was playing Baldur's Gate 3 and came across Bob as an NPC. The quest involving NPC Bob would be legendary. Now, the real question is, would you try to fuck him? Yes. That I mean, uh, yes, I'm answering. I'm answering. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, here you go. You know, I found one. Okay. There you go. There you go, guys. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! This is by Super Mario 00C85. And this this tweet has 43,000 likes. Okay. You can finally have Chained Kong, a prisoner of war, as your Nintendo Switch icon. <laughs> and that is your tweet of the week. Well, I okay. We're all happy. All right, I've, I didn't actually pull up the, the tweets. Right. Uh, what happened? Motherfucking, here we go. All right. Uh, we got, I know Bob, 94. No, you don't. Good. Says, if you squint your eyes, Tears of the Kingdom is also a remake. Sick burn. That's actually kind of true. So a friend of mine uh, ha- hasn't played uh, Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom yet. He said, Breath of the Wild is on sale. Should I buy it? And I said, yes. Okay. I was tempted to tell him to just get Tears of the Kingdom, but he's not like really somebody who plays games a lot. So I feel like just telling him to get the cheaper game was the better route because there's there's still so much you could do in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. You know? I feel like spending the extra, you know, forty dollars on the new game with even more to do just wasn't worth it for this particular person. I don't know. I don't know what I would have said. Yeah. Because they're both good options. Yeah. I did tell him to consider Mario Odyssey. Oh, because yeah. Because that might be more his speed. Yeah. That's easier to jump into yeah. and jump out of. It's more immediately satisfying. Nick Province says, so when are we getting the Wolf Den U2's collectible? My beat-em-ups would one arrive. All you have to do is buy the beat-em-ups would one and break the cat off of it. There you go. And then you have a Wolf Den U2's. Or... Mod it to be a dog. How would you mod a cat to be a dog? 3 printing. You got to do know. a little. You got to put a snoot yeah. on him. <laughs> uh, Melon says, accessibility is, of course, more than difficulty setting. Street Fighter Six is still a good choice because it also has cool new sound design feature for visually impaired players to better access the game, giving sound cues for distance from your opponent, which side you're on, etc. Pretty damn cool. That's really cool because I do know that they're... I think there, like when that game came out, there was a blind player that got to like diamond on yeah. like the the ranked mode. Uh, so I didn't know that it had a uh, sound accessibility yeah. stuff. I, I I know that there are fighting game players who are visually impaired yes. who play games like that. I think also too because like accessibility features are still kind of new, and I think for a lot of a lot of games to them accessibility is just like in easy mode. But then you do have games like The Last of Us, like Street Fighter, like a lot of the Sony first party games that are going above and beyond and doing so much more for like colorblind people and visually impaired people and hearing impaired people and dexterity impaired people and like all all these other like people who don't who aren't traditionally able bodied mm-hmm. to play video games traditionally. So uh tilted in the in the last week's wolf Den podcast says i don't know why final fantasy 16 is catching strays for its narrative i'm like 12 hours into it and find the story incredibly gripping you know what it is look at it from an outside perspective just grab a couple of random cutscenes, and it just looks like a brooding guy in a gray environment yeah i'm sure it's i'm sure it's good i've heard nothing but good things about the story but from an outsider looking in it looks like cringe bait yeah <laughs> All right, now we're in the chat. Okay. Hello, everybody. I finished Alan Wake Remastered. Thanks, Wolf Den, for the recommendation. Did we recommend it? Oh, the remaster, have... yes. Yeah. Though, to be honest, the ending really confused me. Oh, yeah, no, it's totally confusing. And I think the remaster also has the two DLC episodes. Those do not help. <laughs> and, you know, I haven't played Alan Wake 2, but from what I understand, that game 
does not answer anything. I do want to play that. I do that too. Was really good. I have a friend who works at the local library, and I asked her what the deal is with video games, and she said, "You're gonna have to like get back to me on that because I don't know how it works." Because like they get video games at at my library, but they don't know how it works. She specifically doesn't know like how like they get them in or what frequency they get them in. Like she doesn't. Oh, know- like 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 Alan Wake. Yeah, like to get like, Alan Wake. Yeah. Okay. So like she doesn't know if they get the new releases, if they have to wait a little bit, like how frequently they get games. Yeah. Well, in. How would they even do that? Do they have to buy them, or do they wait for a donation? Like how does that? that work? Exactly. I don't know. Interesting. Because like my library has like Street Fighter Six and Mortal Kombat, so I could just go in there and get those. But like, those came out a while ago. Like, when does my library get games? It would be kind of interesting to set up a library like you know it'd be cool to like go to a library and be like all right we're gonna give you all of the best games for the past 30 years yeah <laughs> like just lo- just be like here's a kit of the best games from the past 30 years that everybody should mm-hmm. play you know and and have ways for people to come in and play them yeah but i guess that is part of what the video game history foundation yeah. is trying to figure out anyway uh all their games are confusing control as well yes i guess remedies yeah. games uh what was that one remedy game they put uh quantum break mm-hmm. that game was that game was so weird because like that, that was like probably a little bit more accessible in terms of like its story but like you play like an hour level and then you have you literally have to watch a 30 minute tv show <laughs> and like yeah it was in episodes right yeah and like you could pause the tv show but i didn't know if like if i shut off the xbox could i return to the episode where i left off so i would just have to sit there and watch the whole show <laughs> that's fucking annoying yeah uh oh wtr cell says looking to get a ps5 with exclusives which which exclusive would you guys say are must-haves to play get the ps5 with the spider-man 2 bundle yeah because like as of right now that's the exclusive to play yeah there's not i gotta be honest this generation not the best exclusives it's uh, across the board it's off to a slow start, which is weird to say because we're three years in. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, we've gotten we got Horizon, Forbidden West, we got God of War, Ragnarok, we got new Forza games, and we got a new Halo game on the other side. But like, nothing has really been like the like the big wow game that like yeah. you know Spider Man one was or the you know 2018 God of War was. Yeah, nothing's really so doing it for me, honestly. Spider Man's good though. If yeah. you're gonna get a PS5 right now, there's a bundle with Spider Man. Like there so are just good, that. like the games are good, but the games aren't like setting the world on fire like they did last generation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Edward Bova wants to know our hot take about the Pokemon COO saying we're always paying very close attention to the feedback, talking about how everybody hates Scarlet and Violet. Uh, I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> I think that they don't care enough. I saw something that um the Sledgehammer developer. Uh, in response to the negative feedback of Modern Warfare 3, he's like, oh, that just makes us work even harder to make the game better. Like, I don't believe you. Today, uh, Activision sent out an email to all players of Modern Warfare 3 saying, thank you for helping us break all of these records. <laughs> like, most amount of people playing a Call of Duty game. Like, all they're, yeah. they're, they're, the game is as successful as ever. Yeah. Even though it's very bad. See, and that's the problem. <laughs> I'm part of the problem. Yeah, we keep saying, you know, stop it. Stop making Call of Duty games every year. Stop, you know, making them shitty. You know, do something else. But if every year, every Call of Duty game is the best-selling Call of Duty game, yeah. then guess what Activision is just going to do? Just keep making Call of Duty games. Wow, did not expect that to break records. I don't know the details. They, it did break a lot of records, but uh, it it's also just marketing. They could be like 
massaging the way that they're wording the records to be something that breaks it, you know? Anyway, let's be done. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whoever. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps with the placement on all of those respective platforms. I will try to put Amazon uh, an, an Amazon affiliate link in the description and an Amber Nick affiliate link in the description. I don't know if I have other affi- I think I can do Best Buy links in the YouTube video. I don't know how this okay. works. But if you're buying things from any of those storefronts for Best Buy, it helps support the channel. That would be so cool if you did that. Because it doesn't cost you anything. And it gives us money. Uh, what do, Who do we want to raid here? Who's Who, on? Who's doing Let's work? Let's see. Who's cooking? Who's cooking, bro? We can just raid AJ. Fuck it. The old, old standard. <laughs> Good old reliable AJ. Good old reliable AJ playing Smash Brothers. Thanks for being here. I'll see you. I don't know. It's the holidays. Yeah. When the fuck am I going to stream? I didn't even stream sun. I've, I've been slacking. Yeah. You better get uh, on that. I don't know. Maybe a, maybe a Thursday night. Maybe a wacky Thanksgiving <laughs> maybe a Thanksgiving night stream. stream. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being here. See you later. Goodbye. Bye. That's not the right one. There it is. <laughs>